Hello everyone, this is Bart Coppens and welcome to my backyard. Today I built a light trap here that is going to attract insects. And I'm going to film the species it's going to attract for you. Now it's a special video because I've done a lot of light trapping videos. But most of them were in the tropical rainforest in Brazil. I think this is the first time I'm filming it in the Netherlands. Now, I think the species we are going to attract here are going to be a bit smaller than the ones we usually see in the rainforest. Because when it comes to Northern Europe, the insects tend to be a little bit, well, less, less large. But it doesn't mean that they are boring. And it's my backyard, it's very convenient to moth trap here and I'm just curious what kind of insects I can attract from the comfort of my backyard. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my backyard in the Netherlands. And I've always wondered what kind of moths live in my garden and in my residential neighborhood. That's a good question. What's interesting is I've made a lot of moth trapping videos in my life. But I've never actually done it in my home country, the Netherlands. So today we are going to find out what kind of moths we can attract here. The sun is going down, so it's time to turn it on. Not the most professional construction in the world, but who cares. 3, 2, 1, let's see if it works. And now we wait. All right, everyone. Who knew that my humble backyard could have so many insects? We managed to attract a nice number of insects and let's get started with the, the catch of the day. Let me show you. Take the camera for a second. But perhaps the most interesting thing I caught today was the European rhinoceros beetle. Horictus nasicornis. Here you can see it even has horn. And what's interesting, so this one is actually of the Dynastidae family. So yes, if you're wondering, those giant rhino beetles from Costa Rica and French Guiana. This one is the European relative of those, in case you were wondering. Well, this species is sort of uncommon in the Netherlands and I didn't even know that it occurred this close to my home. So I'm surprised. The cool thing about moth trapping is that if you moth trap you attract a lot of insects from your local area that sometimes you didn't even know occurred there in the first place. So that's good. So yeah. It isn't a very big species, but for European standards, this is a large beetle. And I would say this is one of the largest beetles in the Netherlands. Apart from, of course, the European stag beetle, but it comes close. There you go. In my home country, the Netherlands, these are mostly known to breed in compost heaps. So if you have a garden in the Netherlands or Europe, it can be beneficial to keep a pile of compost in your yard so that these um, sort of rare beetles can procreate in there. And as you can see, it has the very typical horn that the males of many rhinoceros beetles have. 
Oh, let's zoom out. It was too much zoom. As you can see, there you go. Oops, again, too much zoom. Zoom out. Yeah, this camera isn't always good at focusing, sadly. Sometimes it's focused, it prefers to focus on the background instead. There you go. That's a nice catch if you ask me. Very interesting. Sorry for harassing it. I will of course let it go. There you go. As you can see it has like a chocolate brownish elita. So, who knew you can have stuff like this in your own backyard? I do, only after finding out. Insects we are going to take a look at today are going to be small compared to most of my videos. That's because I have spoiled you guys rotten with rainforest videos where I've been light trapping in the tropical rainforests of Brazil. And of course, in comparison with the Netherlands, we are going to get much smaller insects here. It's only normal. I don't live in a rainforest, guys. But some of these could be very interesting. Let's start with this one, for example. It's a geometric moth and it's known as the clouded border. The clouded border, here you go. So which pieces shall we talk about next? There's just so much to see here tonight. And I hope you guys appreciate the video, even if this is not a Brazilian rainforest, but the Netherlands. It's the first time I'm mouth trapping in the Netherlands. So for the first time we're getting to see many species I didn't film before. I think the most obvious choice is this one here. This is a relatively big moth for Dutch standards. As you can see near my finger it's a decent size isn't it and it's very pretty oh oops um did i just scare it away let's wait till it lands again come on come back so this ephemeral beauty right here is called uh, the swallow-tailed moth Uraptic sambucaria and um, these species, uh, the caterpillars, they feed mostly on elderberry, but also common ivy, and I believe in some cases even honeysuckle. It's a very pretty species, and I believe it truly is the largest geometrid moth in the Netherlands. Like, you won't find any bigger species from the Geometridae family in this country. There you go. It's quite beautiful, really. Uh, for some reason, they remind me of moon moths. Call me crazy. I know there is a massive difference between moon moths and this insect, but... And in my area, they seem to be quite common. That's because we actually, we have a lot of elderberry here. Elderberry, it seems to be a very co common plant here. So in return... In return, it makes the swallow-tailed moth common as well. If you're lucky, I bet we can get several in one night. Now, 
this right here is the white ermine Spilosoma lubricipeda. Um, I would say this is one one of the well, it's not the most common, but definitely one of the more common species of tiger moths that one can encounter in the Netherlands here. It's quite pretty. There's also another species here in the neighborhood that's yellow, but let's not talk about those because we don't have them right now. So I'm just gonna show you. Oops. And here we have a very variable, but also extremely common and extremely widespread species. This is called the large yellow underwing moth. And you're probably wondering where's the yellow? Well, like I said, it's their underwings. They don't show it if they're sitting still. Right now we are just seeing the forewings. Now this thing right here is extremely widespread. I'm pretty sure you can see it almost everywhere in the Netherlands. It's an interesting species though. I wonder if I can show the, the, the yellow hind wings though. Well, uh, this species is really abundant in the Palearctic realm and it's really one of the most common moths in the whole region in my opinion. Um, I'm pretty sure it's also an invasive species in many places, even like North America. It's one of the famous cutworms. And they have really many recorded food plants. They really feed on a lot of crops and gardens, but also just stuff like dandelion, spinach, grapevine, lettuce, hogweed, strawberry, really basically hundreds of plant species that makes them interesting though it's a very adaptable species um yeah let's let's see oops that's the church bells at night i think the larvae can even feed on grasses stuff like cherry bramble marigolds daisies basically all the common stuff that grows everywhere. Oh, there it went. You're not very cooperative. I'd say that for the environment, it is a very significant and important species. Oh, did we see the yellow? Come on, show me the yellow. Show me the yellow underwings. Oh, kind of reminds me of a cockroach, how they scuttle away. Hello there, large yellow underwing. Well, we saw some yellow on those yellow underwings. Important, my, my opinion, they are important for the environment just because they are so, so ubiquitous in the environment and they are large. So these are very important food source for insectivorous birds, but also stuff like bats who both eat the caterpillars and the moths. For a short moment, it seems to be willing to walk on my hand. It's probably gonna walk away any minute right now or fly away. Hello, yeah, did you see the yellow? That's why it's called the yellow underwing. Oh, hey, that's cool. I, 
because we have two swallow-tailed moths right now. Yeah, sitting close together. <coughs> Oops, I apologize for that. <laughs> that was not very professional. <clears throat> anyway, oh no, the wind. Stop it, wind. Stop ruining my shots. Ah, these moths are lovely. They're very beautiful. I love moths, guys. There's oh, so many species, so many shapes, so many colors. It's the ultimate satisfaction to look at these awesome creatures. And who knows, maybe we'll find something rare one day in my garden, you don't know? Wow. Have you ever seen a swallow-tailed moth, guys? If you live in Europe, it's pretty likely that you've seen them. They're not even that rare, but you do have to live in a place, I guess. It has enough house plants to support them. Now here we have a very controversial one. This is Sidalima perspectalis, the box tree moth. And most noticeably, this is a highly invasive species, I believe originates from Asia. It was in the news for many years when people panicked when they were introduced to the Netherlands. But the thing is, they are not really that harmful for nature. Because they're f I think their house plant is primarily boxes or box tree. Now, box tree is, I think, native to some parts of Europe. So in these places, the moths do damage the environment. But in the Netherlands, I think this plant is not considered native and it's mostly a decorative plant that you see in gardens and parks. So from that perspective, this pest is mostly an economic pest because it ruins the plants in people's tidy and neat gardens. Box tree is often used for landscaping, so gardeners are not happy if a moth is introduced that defoliates it and it's gone. Let's try to find it again. Despite the fact that this species is intensely hated by many people, it is pretty, I have to admit. Yeah, it's invasive, it's considered a pest, but you gotta be real here. It is, it is pretty. They have like this pearlescent gloss over their wings and that does make them quite pretty now what's interesting is there is also a black form but the black form tends to be more rare here it is actually just like clockwork i got a black form that's funny i literally just mentioned it now this is not staged it's just a coincidence Let's see if it wants to cooperate. So this is the same species, yeah? This is the black form of the box tree moth. Yeah, it is not cooperative. In case you were wondering, yes, this is the same species. I'm still talking about the box tree moth. Sidalima perspectalis. And this is a good example of how moths can have color forms in some cases. That's true. Some species of moths have color forms. And here's a nice example showing you the the white and the black form of the same species. Oh, it meant it's, it's running away. So yeah, that was the box tree moth. Tonight we'll be getting a lot of species that I didn't show before on YouTube. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying it, you know. Despite the fact that the species of moths that we get in the Netherlands, they are much more humble, really. Often much smaller species. Um, so don't expect anything huge. But there's a, t a lot of tiny micro Lepidoptera. So there's plenty for me to talk about tonight. Now in Dutch we have a saying and it goes like... Wie het kleine niet eert, is het grote niet weert. It means, he who does not honor the small is not worth the great. 
So people who do not appreciate small things aren't worthy of big things. Yeah, that's my native language. And today this theme applies to some of the tiny moths that we found. Because a lot of them are very small, smaller than the moths I normally talk about. See if it's even possible to get a close-up. It's small. Uh, but small moths are worth considering also. They are very valid. Oh, that's so cute. And I believe this is Losotinoides formosana. Yeah, that's a scientific name. I don't think it has a common name. And this species, I believe, oh, it's really hard to hold it still, it's so small. I believe they feed on pine tree. Turns out we have a big pine tree in my garden in the back. So that's a consistent observation. At least it's consistent with the environment here. Oi, 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 oi. This is so hard. I rarely film. I rarely film micro labs. So there you go. Close up of a small cutie. Oof. Okay, that's hard. I, sh I, I really need like a macro camera, camera for my channel. That stuff is expensive, yo. And here we have a caterpillar killer. What does that mean? This is a noctuid and it's called the Dunbar moth. Cosmia trapezina. And what's cool about this piece is the caterpillars of this tiny little thing. Well, they feed on host plant, they are mostly vegetarian. But they're actually opportunistic carnivores. Because if they encounter caterpillars of other species, they will grab them and kill them and eat them. This is pretty rare. Caterpillars who are carnivores. It's very unusual. Most of them are vegetarian, but this one is not. But what's interesting is that the caterpillars of this species, they, they can feed off a vegetarian diet. Uh, but eating other car caterpillars is just a way for them to get extra proteins, but it's also a way to eliminate competition. You see, other caterpillar species are eating the same leaves of the same plants but eating the larvae of other moth species well it eliminates competition that's eating your food plant your leaves so that's a win-win extra protein and eliminating other caterpillars who feed on the same food very common species i would like to breed it one day in captivity so we can see the carnivore behavior Maybe one day. Nocturids are very common in Europe. So expect to see a lot of nocturids tonight. Very common in my garden are these lace wings. These green lace wings. I like lace wings, they're charismatic. I believe lace wings feed on aphids. So that means they're pretty beneficial for your garden. So finding them right now is good news. Because I believe their early stages, their nymphs, their immature stages, are carnivores that hunt aphids most of the time. And maybe, you know, maybe so are the adults. So that's good. Insects are beneficial for gardens, we shouldn't be mindlessly killing them. Here's more lace wings. Hard to get good close-ups because once again they are small. All the stuff I'm filming today, it feels so small for me. I'm used to big moths really. I'm used to giant moths and so now we have to film tiny stuff like this that's smaller than my fingertip. We so many, but today I'm learning about small moths. That's cool. They deserve attention. If I was American, I probably would have pronounced this as 
Wipernum Muta. But I won't, because I actually know how to pronounce certain names. I'm not claiming I know how to pronounce every name, though. But I know how to pronounce certain names. It's pronounced Iponomauta. The interesting thing about Iponomauta, I think in the Netherlands there's like 11 or 12 species of them. And to identify them, I think you need a semblance of expertise. I cannot... That's the church bells. I cannot identify them from the top of my mind. But what's interesting is that all the different species in the Netherlands are specialized in different house plants. So if you find the caterpillars on the house plant, it's very easy to identify them. Very common in my area is Iponomauta rorella, the species that feeds on willow tree. But I cannot be sure, I, I don't have the confidence to say like, oh, this is Iponomauta rorella. It could be, most likely, but I'm not sure. I should learn a bit more about these, I should study them more, so in the future I can identify them for for these YouTube videos. If we zoom out, we see there's a lot of them. Like these tiny with white little moths here on the sheet. Here's more Iponomata. Oh, the wind is so annoying. Here's more of them. And actually there's literal dozens of them right now. Let's, let me just take my camera for a second, all right? Let's zoom out. Sorry for this. This is awkward. Okay. Let's see. So here's one. One Iponomata. Two Iponomata. Three Iponomata. Wow, it's sitting on my fingernail. There it goes. That was three. Number four. Number five, number six. That's six of them in a minute. If I keep going, this is my tripod for my camera. If I keep going, I'm pretty sure I could find like 20 of them or more, maybe 30. Yeah, these are very common. Really out of my comfort zone, guys. Micro Lepidoptera, micro moths are really not up my alley. I believe that was Archips podana, the large fruit tree tortrix, and it's gone. Let's see if we can possibly show it again. Probably not, it flew away. Well, hope you had a short impression of that one. This cutie right here is found in almost any garden because I believe the host plant is stinging nettle which is found pretty much virtually everywhere in the Netherlands. Anania hortulata. Oop, and they don't like being touched, but that makes sense. Did you see it though? Did you catch a glimpse of it? It's quite pretty. We let's see what else we got. What else have we got? Lots of micros. Ah, let's take this mothy here. We haven't looked at it yet. Let's take a look at this, at this boy. What's funny about Europe is we gave a name to all of our silly noctuids that would be unfathomable in a rainforest. But yes, Europeans are crazy like that. We give everything a common name. I believe this one is called the Uncertain. Octo... no. Hoplodrina Octogenaria. If I'm not mistaken, sorry, I was doubting there. I guess it is uncertain for a reason, eh? Uh, it kind of has like this very subtle coppery shimmer. Very cute. A lot of moths who just appear to be brown or grey secretly always have like this golden or pearlescent shine to them. Cute, 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 cute. Wee. This one, I believe, is called the Ribboned Wave. Interesting little thingy. 
it's really funny to me how even like geometries like this have a freaking common name in Europe. It's just so silly. It's so silly. I'll use common names for this video, but to be honest, in my opinion, they are not good to use. It's better to use scientific names, but anyway. This is called Ediorictea. I don't know which pieces. So, IDing this kind of stuff requires a dissection or a DNA test. But enjoy your microlabs. A lot of people said uh, they need more attention on my channel, so there you go. I really, you know what would really help my channel? Oops. Hello. Thank you. What would really help my channel is a ma macro lens or macro camera. So we can make those super close-ups. Maybe one day. It's just too expensive right now. Oh, what's this? It's something interesting. I think it's the buff ermine, Spilosoma lutea. That's cool, but it's by no means rare. But it's a pretty insect. I hope it settles down. Seems like it did actually. It's a shame that this is a male. Oop, if it was a female, I would have kept it to see if she would lay any eggs. It looks as if slowly the sun is going to go up and the birds are singing so soon the moths will stop coming this is almost the end of the video <laughs> look at that <laughs> why is it peeking out bro it's so silly though like for real look at his face Oh, you're begging to be filmed. You're begging to be filmed. How cute. Yeah, moth faces can be pretty adorable. That's great clickbait though. Time to make 100 top 10 cutest moths clickbait videos. Those usually do well. Oh, you're really trying your best to be kawaii, aren't you? Yeah, you're so cute. You're so cute, you're a pick me. Look at that. Whoop. I hate it when my camera does that. There you go. How long are we gonna keep staring at it? Oh! It's almost as if it hurt me. I think I insulted it. It's cute. This should be the heart and dart moth. The heart and dart. A grotis exclamationis. And this cutie is super ultra mega common, basically in farmlands, gardens, pastures, parks, suburbs. Like this species has conquered the Netherlands, it's very common. Also because it can use a broad range of food plants, really. I think caterpillars will feed on a very wide variety of vegetables and crops. Which does not make them popular with gardeners or farmers. And there's like this common theme. Where people try to fight off caterpillars in their garden. And also there's this common theme where all the species that feed on human food crops are overrepresented, are very common in the environment. Just goes to show the massive impact that humans have on the environment. To the extent where even the moths that can be the most common are basically because of farming. 
and uh, yeah, the heart and dart, classic species. I expected to find them at one point. These and Noctua pornuba are just some of the most frequently occurring moths, probably. And there you go. This is the end of the video because the sun is coming up. The sky is blue. So this is the end of the night, so I'm gonna turn the light off. Boom, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. As you can see, the insects in Europe, especially the Netherlands, are interesting, but smaller. But the star of the show was the Eurasian rhino beetle. I did not expect that in my own garden. And the thing is, my home country, the Netherlands, actually does have a few places where you can catch a lot of moths and big ones. I'm talking big hawk moths. Really good places to moth trap in the Netherlands, for example, are the, the dunes or in the middle of the woods, a forest. Now guys, my channel is completely demonetized. If you like the show, consider becoming a member on my Patreon. It helps me compensate for the production time of these videos, but more importantly, we could crowdfund going to the dunes, going to the forest and to moth trap there. It's more interesting than my backyard and we are going to see more spectacular and rare moths there. I don't know if it's gonna happen, it could. It's up to me and maybe up to you. See you next video, bye.